Hello, everyone, and welcome to VMs End to End, where we are talking about you know, how to use virtual machines, Compute Engine, with other services on Google Cloud and outside. Um, for the next few episodes, it's going to be just myself and a guest. And our guest today, we're bringing back Katie McLaughlin. Welcome, Katie. Hello again, Brian. Ready and super excited, because we're going to talk about Cloud Run today. So... I always like to start off with kind of an overview of things, you know, so, you know, what is Cloud Run? Well, Brian, have you ever wanted to run COBOL in the cloud? Or Lisp? I'm not sure if I have. Or Fortran? <laughs> Anything that you can put into a container, you can run it on Cloud Run. As long as when Cloud Run gets it, it can say, are you listening on a port? Yes, you are. Okay, I will serve you now doesn't matter what's inside the container. OK, that's really cool. So that, um, like, one of the big challenges with, um, there's a lot of different ways to run containers these days. <laughs> um, so that that kind of helps, like, get to part of, you know, what what is special and unique about Cloud Run. So it's, it's anything you can put in a container that's listening on a port. Um, can you tell me a little more? That's basically the gist of the Cloud Run runtime container contract. If you give it a container and it can listen on a port, then it will run it for you. And that's all you have to provide. There are many other services where you have to create your own cluster, specify um, how many instances, how many nodes, all that stuff. If you need that level of complexity, you go for it. You do you. But if you don't, then Cloud Run might be the compute platform for you because you just give a container. It's like, here, here's my container. I would like you to run it, please, and thank you. And that's all you need to do. Awesome. So we're going to get load balancing and you know scaling and that kind of stuff just for free as part of the deal. Yeah. Cool. So then I guess the, the question is, from your perspective, like how does this fit in with systems that have VMs or, you know, actually just, you know, Google Cloud as a whole? Ah, well, now that you mention it, I did see a couple of weeks ago a really cool demo by Richard Sirota where he took a Go service and deployed it onto Google Cloud Functions second generation, which uses containers. So he provided the Go uh, file and the dependencies that he needed. Cloud, uh, Cloud Functions packaged that all up, created a container, told it how to run the service because it's Go. You compile Go and then you just run the executable. And then he took the container that was created by Cloud Functions and deployed it to Cloud Run and deployed it to GKE and deployed it to Compute Engine because, Brian, I'm sure you're aware you can run containers on Compute Engine. Absolutely. It's one of the, the lesser known features. You can you know just start it right from the, the console. Um, so I mean, I love this like this because I, I think of our different compute bits as kind of an abstraction stack, you know, and you've got the higher abstraction things like functions at the very top and then compute engine at the you know the, the base of the, of the stack of things. Um, could, could you talk a little more about like where did that container come from and like how, did, how does that because each of these systems can run containers, but where did that come from? Like, and how does it get out? I'm, I'm curious about that part. Do you remember zip files? How you could zip something up, you can compress it, you can just, here is a thing, you can send it to uh, your person on a Mac or person on Windows, and you can expand it all out, and there's all your stuff in this common file format. Containers are just layers of tar files with a little bit of JSON metadata around it, but it is a now standardized packaging format. That's basically what it is now. And there are many different things, not just Docker, that can create containers. Uh, Google Cloud Functions second generation uses a system called Build Packs, which detects the language that you're using and does common tasks. So for Python, It'll install from your requirements.txt, and then it'll ask it, how do you want to run your service? Uh, for Go, it'll compile it, then run the executable, and then it'll put it all together in a nice little container and send it off to be run whenever you need it. 
Got it. So yeah, so then it ends up on Cloud Run or on, you know, you could use that same thing on Kubernetes and on VMs. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that, that brings us down the stack. Um, the last time we talked, you mentioned that this migrate to containers thing as well. Does that, that seems like it's going the other direction. Am I right? Sometimes you can't start with a greenfield or brand new system. Sometimes you have your special carefully crafted, sculpted, cared for snowflake VM that you need to do something about because it's a little bit special and a little bit fragile. So you can run migrate to containers, which can help you containerize that VM. And then from there, you can extract out the process that you want to run on Cloud Run, and that will help you with your lift and shift process, very aptly named, where you can take your very bespoke special compute engine and start the process to evolving that into a more robust microservice architecture. That still surprises me that that works, but I love I love that that exists to kind of pull processes apart and like make containers for them. And so, um, so we really are in the space where the, the tooling is getting good to help us out with this moving up and down the layers of abstractions. You know, if you get into containers somehow, either kind of from the bottom up or the top down, then you have this flexibility for, for moving around. How, how would, if we have this flexibility, you know, how would you recommend, you know, people think about deciding, you know, where something lives? And in particular, what is a really good fit for Cloud Run? It depends what you want to have to worry about. In Compute Engine, you have complete control over everything from your OS to the architecture to GPUs. Right at the top of the abstraction, there's a choice of a number of languages and it will run a function. That one is called Cloud Functions. It is aptly named a function or a method if your programming language defines a chunk of code as a method, not a function. That's what it'll do. And Cloud Run is in the middle where in functions, you run one function in Compute Engine, you can run multiple processes. Cloud Run will do a process with many functions. So you can see how you can get the complexity variation there depending on what you actually want to run. And off to the sides, you have Kubernetes Engine, GKE, if you want to have to do all the uh, Kubernetes stuff with multiple processes all interacting. And if you have a web service, you can go over into App Engine with its specialized tool set. It's like a little diamond of possibilities. A diamond, a diamond of possibilities. I like that a lot. Um, so what kinds of uh, patterns are you seeing? So I, I'm interested in like VMs all the time, right? Especially in this series. So I'm curious, you know, what kind of patterns you're seeing people using Cloud Run with, with VMs? Of course, I mean, you don't just have to stick with one compute type, you can change it all up because, Brian, your special Snowflake VM that you spent all this time crafting, you wouldn't want to install something on that that might cause issues or might make your life a bit harder to maintain, right? It's true. Yeah. So as an isolation and abstraction mechanism, that image processing service to turn any image into a thumbnail Maybe you want to deploy that to Cloud Functions, where you can use a Java uh, isolated environment and have whatever package you want on there to do the image manipulation for you. And then you don't have to install Java on your VM. You can just have this function that does it for you. This allows you in your Compute Engine instance to basically call it like an API that you control. It's just the HTTPS URL. You send it the data, maybe a query string for the uh, height and width and a posted payload of the image. And maybe that function will return back the image to you or it creates a cloud storage object and then there's maybe a PubSub message that you can listen to, to, oh, my image is ready now. You can start adding different mechanisms like this, different uh, messaging systems. You could uh, make this a cloud task that is invoked where you say, ah, I have a new thumbnail for you to process. Put it in a cloud task queue, which then calls the HTTP endpoint, which will then do the stuff. 
and let you know when it's done. So you can start building these asynchronous computational models that uses a variety of different compute options from Google Cloud, including some of our orchestration and workflow stuff, including cloud workflows, which means you can have all these things chained together and you can start creating some really interesting architectures where you can have your special snowflake and the service somebody else wrote in Java that they can control because you are not a Java expert, let's say. I'm sure you are, Brian. But you can start having these complex heterogeneous architectures that can just do anything you need without having to work out how do I install and keep Java up to date on my special snowflake machine, for example. That makes a lot of sense. So, you know, you've got you describe like a, a security boundary, different like language runtime environments, asynchronous, like there's a whole bunch of different kind of architectural things that that's serving. That's that's nice. So this, um, when people say lift and shift or move and improve, I, I think this is one of the patterns, you know, where like you've, you've got your thing and then you can kind of add additional stuff on to the sides and go. Um, so if somebody is inspired by this conversation and wants to give that a try or, you know, wants to play with kind of moving things up and down these abstractions we talked about, um, how would you recommend they learn more or get started? You want to be scrolling down this video a bit and have a look at the description where I'll have a plethora of different links. I'll have a link to Richard Sirota's demo. I'll have a link to getting started with Cloud Run, with Cloud Functions. Um, some of the sample microservices that we have, you can see a Python microservice, a Go microservice, a Java microservice. You can deploy these things under the free tier of Cloud Run and you can just start getting your hands on it. Try to clip all these different Lego blocks together and see what you can build. That's how I would suggest getting started. Awesome. I'm I'm ready to go poke at some more things. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining again. Much appreciated. Anytime, Brian. It's always delightful to chat to you. And thank you, everybody who's watching. I hope uh, this was useful. Uh, you get inspired. If you have any questions, you know, comment below or look us up online. We will try to help you out. And so thank you all and see you next time.